I'm Dave McHugh for D3Hoops.com and Hoopsville here at the Salem Civic Center for the ODAC Tournament. And I'm now joined by the first ODAC Commissioner, and Dan Wooldridge. And uh, first and foremost, this has pretty much been your brainchild, this kind of event uh, here at the Salem Civic Center. It's come a long way since you probably thought it up first and foremost. Well, it certainly has. When we first started the league, we played at the site of the top seed. Right. But the first couple of years, um, we just weren't very successful. I think the, in 1978, we played at Bridgewater College, and um, WNL played uh, Lynchburg, and we had 62 people in the stands. <laughs> but I was a Rotarian at the time, and uh, I had some friends in Rotary, and I approached them, and I thought it would be a good thing for the conference to have a tournament on a neutral site and make it an event for the players. That's that's foremost what we really wanted to do. We wanted to be an exciting time for the players, and then it gave the to give the uh, Rotary Club an opportunity to make some money, which over the past um, however many years it's been here, what 30 years, we've we've made a little over $600,000 that we've given back to the community, and I think the kids the, the kids that have come here have really enjoyed it because it's a great experience for him and. A, for them in a, in a neutral atmosphere. Did it take any hard convincing to tell the teams, listen, we want to go to this neutral site that's, you know, maybe not necessarily your home court, you know, the, the, the advantage of the home court kind of goes away? Well, later on it did. Uh, when the league was formed, Roanoke College and Randolph-Macon were Division II in basketball. And then uh, when Roanoke came into the league in Division Three, it went Division Three across the board. Uh, when Ed Green was coaching here, they won the tournament about six years in a row. And uh, the rest of the coaches were ready to move it. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was not easy to keep it here, but there was no other venue around, and they didn't want to go on campus anymore. And there just wasn't any other venue. And then a little bit later on, ha uh, Randolph Macon came into the league, which was an interesting story. Um, they were Division II in basketball, and Hal Nunley had given uh, a basketball player about $1,000 in athletic scholarship. And, but he happened to be a really good baseball player. Mm. And so in baseball season, um, when the season started, I got a call from one of our athletic directors, and they said, Dan, I, I don't believe that kid can play baseball because he's on athletic scholarship. Yeah. But I didn't know really, I mean, I didn't know a whole lot about being commissioner. And I called the NCAA and they said, no, he can't play. So the athletic director had to go out and literally take him off the mound. He was getting ready to start that day. And uh, Randolph Macon then made the decision. And, uh, and Hal wasn't very happy. He really didn't want to go Division Three, and he didn't want to come to Salem. But they came in and won the tournament. And then he became one of the greatest supporters of the ODAC tournament here that we had, really. And of course, it has grown. Uh, conference has grown, and certainly the tournament has grown as a result of that. When you created or helped create the, the ODAC, and, and did you have any envision of what it would become, especially in the men's basketball side, as one of the top conferences in the country? Well, and certainly Brad has just taken it to a new level with JJ and the people he has. And when we started it, there were only six teams playing basketball. Right. And uh, back in those days, um, the teams had to play, pay their own way. They're, you know, they're, the NCAA didn't pay all the expenses right. and everything like they do now. And I, I never envisioned it would grow like it did. And the Rotary Club deserves a lot of credit. They um, have taken hold of it and, and they do a nice program and, and they have a banquet and all of that. And uh, it's grown into one of the top leagues in the country because it's gotten much more competitive. And of course, Roanoke and uh, Randolph Macon join in the league along with some of the other schools that have come in. Uh, Catholic was in the league at one time right. and Maryville was in the league at one time. Yeah, it certainly has changed a lot. And of course, Catholic's still a football member. When you look at I mean, a lot of people talk about City of Salem, they talk about the Civic Center, and obviously with football they talk about the stadium and, and being such a, a part of Division Three. But uh, maybe some people don't realize, if you guys hadn't really maybe started what you did in the men's and, and women's basketball tournaments here at the Salem Civic Center, the NCAA thing may never have come along either. Well, that it, the uh, Rotary Club and the fact that we had a very successful tournament had a lot to do with it, but the, the Stag Bowl actually came here um, we were veering away from basketball a little That's bit, right. but um, I, when I was commissioner of the ODAC, the, uh, when they played the Stag Bowl, 
the uh, NCAA went to the ACC or the Southeast Conference and got the officials. And I, I just felt that that wasn't right. I, I thought that, you know, the Division Three guys worked all year long, then you get to the biggest game of the year and they bring in somebody else. And, and I complained about it and complained about mm -hmm. it. And finally, uh, Bill McHenry became the athletic director at Washington Lee. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ended up getting on the football committee and they played a game in Phoenix City, and a Southeast Conference crew came in to work the game. And, you know, they, they weren't excited about it. I mean, they'd rather have been working Alabama or whatever. Sure. And so at halftime, uh, Bill was actually going to the bathroom, and a security guard was coming out. And he had this big bundle in, his, in their arms. And Bill said, what have you got? And they said, well, we got the official's jackets. And Bill said, let me see. And he looked, and the crew was stealing three game balls. And he went crazy. I mean, he just, and so he convinced the committee to let me bring a crew of Division Three officials down to Phoenix City in 1988 to officiate the game. And, and the guys that went, all of them later became Division One officials, but it was really a good crew, and they would tickle to down. I mean, championship game for Division Threes, and we had a great game. Ithaca played Central Michigan, Central Iowa, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a great game, easy to work, and that started Division Three officials working Division Three in everything, and you went on to yeah. basketball, but I. The facility in uh, Phoenix City was not near what we have here. And I got the idea that, uh, gee, we could do a better job than they do. And Salem already having the ODAC tournament, right. you, you know, I just felt that we could really support it. And so uh, um, I started working on and had to pull some arms and twist some arms and everything. And then the Stag Bowl came here. So officiating really helped bring the Stag Bowl here, even though the basketball tournament had uh, set you know set the beginning as a successful venue here and that opened up the door to everything else that later came i think this year from the ncaa standpoint when we crown the final four champion this year i believe that'll be the 69th national champion that's been crowned here in division three i was going to say just all small beginnings become so big yeah. 69 division three and of course there's even more there's been division two titles decided here as well city of salem has become a championship city i'm quite sure that wasn't on the game plan no it wasn't and uh when they made the presentation the stag bowl had actually moved to bradenton florida mm -hmm. and they you know people said boy you'll never get that game out of florida <laughs> and uh we've had snows and yeah. one year it snowed 14 inches on Friday night. So yeah. we have not had great weather, but I think geographically, at least back in the uh, early 90s, something like 65 or 70% of the Division Three schools are within a 300 mile radius of Salem because they're in the Northeast and the right. East. But now, of course, Texas has a lot of them in yeah. some of those places. And uh, uh, I think we have the basketball for the next three years and the football for the next three years and right. softball and all that. Yeah, all the way through 2018, I believe it is, or, or later. What does that mean? The, the, the NCAA keeps coming back and saying to the city of Salem, you know, you do a really good job with the Stag Bowl, you do a really good job with the men's basketball Final Four, and certainly other championships. We want to keep it here. Well, the, the vineyards are good for Division Three. Right. I mean, you know, to go to a stadium in football that would seat 80,000 or 50 or even 60, but a 7,000 seat and an arena that seats about 5,000, it's it's perfect for Division Three. Yeah. And we've had a couple of sellouts in both basketball and football, but I think the venue that's here in uh, the city of Terry Harvey who was a director of, of everything for years and years, is now retired from his Salem job, but he's still directing all the NCAA events as well as the, as the um, ODAC events. Um, it's just a great place and the community gets behind it and, you know, people come out, the locals come out pretty well. Uh, Roanoke hasn't been in a tournament in the last couple of years in basketball and that hurts the attendance some, but uh, they'll come back and uh, be better. For as long as the ODAC existed, there's only been two commissioners, yourself right. and Brad Bankston. What does that say for the stability of the conference? You know, that's not very common even in the big boy world. Well, I'm, you know, I, I don't know about the other Division Three conferences. When we started, there weren't, there weren't, I think that when I was commissioner of the ODAC, there were like 300 Division Three schools mm -hmm. in America. Now they're like 450 Four, or something. Yeah. And uh, a lot back in the early days, a lot of the Division Three conferences 
uh, were su the supervisor officials and or the commissioners were also commissioners of a division two, like the Ohio Valley sure. or some of those leagues. And it hadn't been maybe the last 20, 25 years that uh, the division three institutions have seen fit to hire their own commissioners. And now there are a lot more of them, but uh, division three is, um, the people around here just uh, adapted to it and they're very happy with it. It's certainly impressive that you and then Brad and then everybody else will follow sometime down the road. But Brad doesn't look like he's leaving well, he uh, anytime soon. Job. He does a great job. And uh, when when uh, Brad came to work for us, um, I was a part-time mm -hmm. commissioner because I had a business and I was also an NCAA referee for 25 years. And so I just worked part-time. They really couldn't afford to pay me full-time. But... Uh, after he had been here a couple of years, then I went to the athletic directors and said, we need to hire Brad full time. And, you know, they said, you know, why are we hiring a full time SID when we got a part time commissioner? And so we had a little battle over that. And uh, I, I remember the meeting was here in Salem. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to walk out in the hall and y'all got 10 minutes to either hire Brad or you can find somebody to be a commissioner. And so they hired him full time. And uh, He's been full-time ever since. Yeah, he has. Great job of strong-arming him. That's a very nice tactic. <laughs> well, I played in this league years ago when it was the old Mason Dixon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I knew a lot of the people back then. Well, it's been a wonderful event here, obviously, in Salem for the, the ODAC tournament. And the NCAA tournaments have always been great here, too. You can almost, really, you can thank Dan Wooldridge for well, a lot of that in Division Three. Well, I really appreciate and I appreciate y'all's support. And uh, everybody has sort of pitched in and, and made this a great event. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. He's Dan Woldridge. I'm Dave McHugh for D3Hoops.com and Hoopsville.